Welcome to Conscious Coupling, where Frederick Gobey and Christy Whitman share their experiences of creating a conscious, connected relationship. Every week, they give practical tools, steps, and processes to help you find the loving connection with your partner. Let's get into today's conversation with Frederick and Christy. Hello and welcome back to the Conscious Connected Coupling with Christy Whitman and Frederick Gobey. Hello and welcome <laughs> to our studios that we're filming this for those of you who are watching on video in our Dave Pratt studios and look at the beautiful image behind us. All right, awesome. so and if you're on the podcast, hello. hello so can you fall back in love when you fall out of love? I will say absolutely yes. We know countless, countless, countless stories of people that have said they're done, they've fallen out of love and felt that it was over. And I will have to admit, I've never said this publicly before, but I was one of those people. And um, I was one of those people with my husband, Frederick. Oh where God. I had felt, I wasn't really out of love, but I felt that the love was done. And I felt that I was done because there were some different things that happened in our relationship where I was continuing to grow and he thought he was perfect and didn't have anything to do or grow on. I did my growth. I had done some growth and I was like, okay, perfect. I did what I needed to do and I know some stuff and I don't need to continue further on because I'm perfect the way I am in my relationship. Yeah, so what happened was um, I was tired of kind of doing it all and being it all. And I was at a point where we had taken a trip to California and I, we had kind of driven up the coast of California to do a couple of different things. And um, actually went to LA first and I did a speaking reel and he was there with me and had some time in LA, did a couple of different TV shows in LA. And then we went into San Diego and I was speaking at um, Lisa Nichols event. And it was, a, it was a big deal for me at the time because it, there was 400 people in the room and it had been the biggest audience that I'd ever spoken in front of, um, not online, but obviously in person. And you know, so it was a big thing for me. We had our nanny and our two boys that were back home in Montreal. And um, so he was there to obviously support me. He was in the room. I get off stage. I felt like I did amazing. You know, I, I was really proud of how everything came out. And as soon as I got off the stage, my assistant at the time said, um, your nanny's on the phone. And so I get on the call with Francine, and she said, your electricity has been turned off of your house. The guy from Hydro-Quebec uh, literally came by. It's a Friday afternoon. And there it was like five o'clock. He came by and said that you, the bill was not paid and therefore we have to turn off the electricity. Now it was a time of year where in Montreal you can't go without electricity because it was getting cold or it was cold. So my kids then had to go over to Francine's condo. Now they were fine, they were protected, but I was pissed. I was very, very upset. And other little things had happened like this and um, I was just done. I, I was completely done and basically told Frederick to pack his bags from San Diego because we were staying there a couple days longer and that he needs to go take care of his kids. And um, I left the room because I was so mad. And I remember calling our therapist at the time and I was crying and I was upset and I'm like, I'm done, I can't do this anymore. And so when I came back to, up to the room, I was, I was still upset. I was crying and now he had actually left, right? And so I had convinced myself that I don't love him anymore, that I don't want to be with him anymore, that I can't handle this anymore. And I proceeded to stay in San Diego because I was speaking the next day again. So he left, I stayed there. And when we returned, I returned on Sunday evening that we couldn't get the electricity turned back on until Monday because they're gone for the weekend. So he had taken the kids and went to a hotel room. So when I came in on Sunday, I met them all into the hotel room and he was very sorry and all this kind of stuff, but I was very much like, I'll say I'm into it, but I'm done. And I had a plan. I wanted to um, move the family to Arizona because I, with, I just knew I was done. And if I had said I was done living just in Montreal and with my kids going to school in Montreal, 
um, I would be stuck living in Montreal, which I didn't want to do. So I started a plan to buy a house in Arizona, to get the kids into Arizona, into the school system, because I was just, I was done. I had no more emotional attachment in this relationship. I wasn't in love anymore. Convinced myself of that. So we bought a house in Arizona, and about a month later, um, we are getting ready to go see our therapist slash healer in Arizona together and literally getting ready to get ready to get in the car to go see her and I get a knock at the door and it's the APS which is the electricity in Arizona saying the bill had not been paid and that the electricity was going to be turned off same exact situation now at the time in Montreal there was one bill that Frederick paid and it was the electricity bill in Arizona there was one bill he paid and it was electricity bill. So same situation, I get this notification and I'm like, I'm fucking that. I mean, I'm just done, right? So get, we get in the car, drive over to see Karen Wilson. I walk in the place and she's like, whoa. Like she could just tell the, the energy when she opened up the door. I the hand heat. the heat, I handed her the, the, lit, the, the sheet that said the notice that they were turning off the electricity. I went and sat down and I just crossed my arms and I said, I'm now done. Like I'm done. Cause I figured, you know what? I'm here in Arizona. My kids are in school. So I'm, I'm set. I can be here in Arizona now. I'm done. I don't need him anymore. Right. I want to walk away from this relationship. And Karen sat there. Well, why don't you, cause it was your experience, but that was, that was it. I really thought that my marriage was over. Right. So that's, that's, I mean, that story is obviously looks at the struggle that I was going through inside. Uh, it, was, it was at a point where, for me in my life, I was struggling a lot to understand what was it to become a man, a responsible man, a responsible adult. And I, I had never been um, shown, and not to make an excuse, right? But the my primary relationship which were my parents that's that's where you kind of see how things are are going on right and i had always had a very dominant powerful mother strong mother who would take care of everything in the household and my father was there in terms of phys physique but was not present at all with uh, with anything in, in in even his life or our lives. I mean, he was rarely was he the one coming over to me and talking to me about something. I would really only remember him taking some time with me to play like baseball where we could throw baseball together. And we really didn't have many conversations, him and I, uh, about you know how how you take care of a, of a household how you take care of of your family how, how do you take care of your wife when you're married you know what are the things that that you need to do when you when you grow up as an adult and just sitting down with your things like that sitting down with your father which are pretty important after I realized that I didn't have and and what I saw was a very detached father um, and that was kind of my, my reaction to the things in my life that were kind of too, too heavy to, uh, to take on, too much of a burden, right? Too much of a, uh, of a way of becoming an adult where I didn't know how to do that. So what I would do is I, was, I, I would escape from everything. I, would, I, I wouldn't be there. I would be there physically around people but I, I really wasn't there. I wasn't being attention, taking, taking attention to what they were saying. Uh, or when I was talking, I was just really saying what people wanted to, to, to hear from me, you know, kind of projecting what, what I felt like was, was good to, to, to see, you know. And so what happened with my relationship is I was doing the same thing. I thought that being in a relationship with someone was just about having the woman do everything in the house and not being responsible because that's how my father did it. And I thought, if I don't, if I don't create any tension, that, that's how I won't create any tension. 
is by letting her do it the way she wants to do. So how do I do that? Just give, it, give her everything and just step back. And so I did not know how to, how to pay bills. I mean, I did do that when I was, when I was younger. I, I was in apartment you know, complexes and I, I, would, I would pay my <coughs> bills, but the bills were late. So anyways, it was, and it was never a, a real big issue for me. So at that point of time, when that happened, it was all of a sudden, it was the bell rang. That was the moment for me, the first time that it happened. That was the moment for me that, where I said to myself, I need to do something. I need to, I need to understand why I'm doing that and, and why I'm losing the relationship. And by the way, my parents divorced. So that divorce, I, didn't, I never thought it would affect me. But later on, I found out that what, how I was acting was expecting my marriage to end up the same way. So I couldn't, I couldn't do enough, I couldn't be enough in order to make this marriage work. And so ultimately, it would end up in failure and I would you know, I, I would end up as a divorce. And so what was going on is I was working into that reality. I was making that reality, that concept into a reality for me, for myself. So and you started going to Karen though after the first time it happened when we were so in San Diego. Exactly, after that first time I started going to Karen, seeing a therapist and started working on myself, working on my own growth, why I'm, why I'm doing these things, what are, where are these patterns coming from, and understanding where they're coming from. But they're still there, right? And so it takes a little bit more time because like, a, like an addiction, it comes back, things come back. And so the second time was more dealing with, are you wanting to really keep this marriage? Yeah, and because he was just sitting there. I'm basically saying, I'm done. We're done. Now we're going we're gonna to have to start taking steps to dissolve the marriage. I'm not serious. I was done. Yeah. I was out of love, at least I thought. And so Karen so, was rattling his cage to wake him up. Right. So the first, the first experience that I had with Karen as a therapist was more of a realizing, okay, what's going on? This is, this, these are the things that are happening. These are the patterns. But I really wasn't applying them. It wasn't a. It was. It was really just in in the in the mental area. It wasn't, Having awareness it wasn't of it. Physical. Yeah. Right. I wasn't living them. Right. Second time around, now I realize I've got to live this stuff. I've got to put it into action. Because if I don't put this into action, that's it. We're done. Yeah. And that's when I started realizing. Okay, I need to put the effort. This is, this is my life. And I've, I, I did tell her when we were there, she sh Karen shook me up the second time that to we the were there. Core. To the core. And she really asked me, do you really want this? Are you, are you ready to do your work and, and to stand up for yourself, stand up for your marriage? And, and kind of like, look at her, look at your wife. She's sitting there, she's crying. And, and are, you, are you aware of this? And so that was, that was the moment where I, I could see her. I could see how this, this whole thing that I, I would think that it, it was fine the way I was behaving, it wasn't. It was really hurting her. And so I came, I came to the, the conclusion that I was, I was ready to do the work that I, was, that I was wanting to do in order to keep my relationship with her. And, and I told yeah. her... I, I told her later on, I said, I am committed to this relationship, this marriage. Any, any you and have from been. that point on, yeah. 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 our things have changed. Absolutely. And guess what? I'm back in love. So can you fall back in love once you've fallen out of love? And the answer is absolutely yes. And so we share this story with you because we have never really shared our tipping point on the show before and felt that it really was time. We've shared kind of bits and pieces of it. It's a very vulnerable story for both of us to share in this capacity because, you know, um, it, it was a tough time. And um, for those that were closest to us, really, 
you know, w wondering are they going to make it or not. And, and we did. And I'm grateful because now I'm more in love with him today than I've ever been. And so how did we get back there? Number one is I had to find my willingness again. I had to find my willingness to do it, even if it was the willingness was to keep the family together for the kids, right? That was at least a part of the willingness. I was willing to find that deep soul connection that we had in the beginning that brought us together. I was able to bring in that willingness. And sometimes that's just that opening of that door to find that space inside of yourself that says, yes, I'm willing to love him. I'm willing to love her. I'm willing to work on this relationship. Um, I have the desire to stay together because we did have a great relationship. Right. We had the, the love is there. It's not like the love all of a sudden disappeared. Well, I felt like it had. I felt like I was out of love, and that's the you know the part of this podcast is hmm. what do you do if you feel like you've fallen out? A lot of times we the love's still there, like you said. You know, it's like when we pass on the love that we've shared with everybody goes with us, right? So the love never really dies. But it can certainly be um, blockaded by anger, resentment, frustration. You know, just feel like I, I just don't want to do this anymore, right? This isn't my. I didn't sign up for this, and I, I gotta. I gotta love myself more than this, and I gotta take care of myself. And so, but it's having that desire, having that desire to really make it work and put in what it would, what would make it work. And that is, you know, consistently getting help. Obviously, we mm -hmm. offer couples, um, you know, workshops, and and our retreat is coming up at the end of February. That's a first step in doing that. Working with your partner on understanding what are the places, all the things that we both had to not only become aware of, but really had to understand. And as Frederick said, not just get as a concept, but live in our lives. We created a program from drama to love. So we are happy now that we're in a place where, you know, for the past four years, our relationship continues to grow and expand and become more conscious and more loving. Are we perfect? God, no. Because we, we continue to grow and expand. It's, it's, it's also... That's it. We've committed our... We've, we are committed to each other and to... To ourselves. ourselves. Yes. In order to continue that growth. I mean, I continue that growth for myself to understand what's going on inside. Because there's still some things that show up. But what happens is now I pick them up much quicker yes. than how I used to do it. And open, because if I come to him and say, hey, I'm noticing this or I'm feeling this, he's more open to listen to me right. and, to, and, to, and to go within instead of be like, well, that's your deal. Well, that's your problem. You know, there's nothing wrong with me, right? So one thing you have to remember is that the love is actually not outside of you with your partner. It's not like he's got my love. The love is inside of you and it's a choice that we make do we want to love again? Do we want to receive that energy in our hearts and be able to give that energy out to our partners in the way of what we say, in the kindness, in what we do, in the way that we just allow that connection inside of ourselves? Because if we're closing our hearts down to our partner, anybody else, we're cutting ourselves out from that, really that source and that flow of where love comes from, and that's our divine self. And when we allow ourselves to feel that love no matter what, it doesn't matter who we're with, we can allow that energy to flow to them as well because we're allowing our source first. And so, you know, we have to be able to be in a place of like love regulation. What I mean by that is sometimes we have to change our mindset and think positively about the other person and about aspects because during that time it was really easy to focus on what was wrong, what was bad, what was not working, what I was tired of, what I was frustrated about. And it, from that place, when you're down in that downward spiral, it's like law of attraction, more thoughts of the same are gonna pile up. So I had to stop myself and say, okay, because I'm having the willingness to fight this out, to not fight it out, but to, to, to move through and find if there really is still something here, I have to be willing to look for the positive aspects, to look for the positive aspects about our marriage, about our relationship, about him, and look for those positive aspects and make that my dominant vibration and my dominant thought. And, and it, go ahead. It would have been enough for me also to say, well, I'm, I'm not enough to, a, to her eyes, so I, I, I don't need to continue this because it's going nowhere. There's no way that I can, that I can 
make her see that that she can trust me she can have confidence in in what i need and show her that you know i'm i'm willing to to do something to recognize what's going on not to change right to recognize what's going on within myself and do that growth and have that willingness and, and have that willingness for sure and say and say to myself i am enough it's all is good it, that's the process that we need to go through to be in, on the other side with with a really an amazing relationship a connected conscious relationship absolutely so you want to avoid the negative thinking traps we talk about this in drama from drama to love you can go from drama to love.com you can also go to christywhitman.com forward slash couples but when you avoid the negative traps of being negative so all or nothing thinking shooting um, you know blaming the other person these are things that we have to be able to catch ourselves doing and be able to shift that perception in our minds we cannot blame our partners if we want to still feel good and grow the love it because that sucks the love out um, when we're shooting when we're saying always and never some some of the things that we go through in the um, from drama to love program are going to help with your willingness and being more positive and looking for the positive aspects and moving you back into a place of gratitude and appreciation for your partner. Right. Um, allowing yourself to be in your heart again and to really be able to allow that love to flow. And you know, being able to know how to communicate about what's important, what you prefer, what you want. All these are so important. But the answer to the question, can you fall back in love again? Yes, you absolutely can because I will say that I love this man with all my heart and I'm so grateful that we went through what we went through. I'm grateful for that time. I actually wouldn't take any of that back because you will, you woke up. And what's cool is that I now know more about Frederick. He allows more of himself to show up, um, makes me laugh all the time. And he wasn't like that before. He was just like a shell of a person. And now his personality comes out even more, which I love. And so, you know, we, we really enjoy our lives together. We really enjoy spending time together. And we love creating together. And um, I'm grateful I didn't let go when it was time to uh, keep my heart open. And I'm, I'm grateful I had the willingness to do that. So if I could do it, you can do it. We could do it. So thank you for, uh, for just saying that. And I want to say that <clears throat> I wasn't the only one that decided to show up, right? You also decided to do the same thing and show up in our relationship. And so I want to thank you for that. Mm -hmm. But if I'm important enough in your eyes, then you're important enough in my eyes, right? So, and that if we're both important enough in each other's eyes, in each other's eyes yes. to do the work, then that will help out in the relationship ultimately. Absolutely. That's for sure. Yeah. So hopefully this has inspired you today to um, wherever you are in your relationship to fall back deeply and madly in love with your partner and to allow the love that is there to flow through you because love does never die. It's an energy. Love can never be destroyed. It's there and you just have to tap into it and have the willingness to do it. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening to our story. And next time we're going to talk about how do you know if it's time to stay or how, if it's time to go like the clash. Do I, yeah. do I stay or do I go? Next time. Thank you so much. See you next week. Thanks for listening to Conscious Coupling with Frederick Gobey and Christy Whitman. If you like our show and want to know more, check out ChristyWhitman.com. And please leave us a review on iTunes. Learn how to turn your partner into your soulmate. Join us again next week for another powerful episode.